In our last episode, we wrote out a little bit of weather in Puerto Escondido that never quite materialized. This time around, thanks to another weather forecast that was quite a bit off, we hole up in Honeymoon Cove before pushing on and covering some more miles north. Well, we've been here in Puerto Escondido for a couple of days now, expecting a big blow. But surprise, surprise, there's been nothing. It's been calm as calm could be. So, the one thing we can count on these days is that the weather forecasting, you can't count on it. So, we're going to get out of here tomorrow. Tomorrow there's supposed to be a south breeze, so we're going to take it and go a little farther north. But, uh, it's been pretty nice here. So, the next morning, we were out of there. But that nice southerly breeze in the forecast, it turned out to be 20 plus knots right out of the north. Rather than bashing and clawing our way farther up the coast, we decided to make a straight shot right across the channel where we pulled into this place. In this little hidey hole, it was as calm as calm could be. So. Right around the corner in the cove to our north, in came Ken and Sebastian. Well, we left Puerto Escondido this morning, trying to make some miles north, but just like normal these days, the weather was way off. So one thing we can count on these days, forecasting, not so good. So, rather than get beat up, pounding into 20 plus knots and some pretty steep chop going north, we pulled into this place. This is Isla Danzante and a little place called Honeymoon Cove. And I gotta say, it's gorgeous. Pretty nice spot to be pinned down while the weather blows itself out. So, since the weather forecasting isn't that great right now, we'll uh, see how things look in the morning and possibly move on. But until then, it's a nice spot. Water's crystal clear. They've got some great hiking trails, some good snorkeling. Not a bad place to be. And if you stand in just the right spot, you can possibly get some phone service. I had it, Brenda couldn't get it. I got it briefly. But uh, basically for almost three weeks, we haven't had cell service. And we're surviving, which is a miracle. I didn't think it would happen. Since we were pinned down in this pretty amazing spot with some pretty amazing water, we, of course, we're going to take advantage of our surroundings. This water is surprisingly cold. After some paddle boarding and a quick anchor check in some surprisingly cold water, we had to do something to warm up. So we hopped in the dinghy, rounded up the troops, and we were off to explore the island. What's going on, man? What's going on? Hey, buddy. Hi, buddy. How are you going? What's happening? Hi. What's going on? See, Ace. Oh. <laughs> Does your seven face make you feel guilty? No. <laughs> <laughs> Isla Danzante is part of Mexico's national park system. And not only does this place have a whole bunch of plants that'll reach out and get you, it's also got some well-defined hiking trails that'll take you up to some pretty great views. It 
doesn't seem to matter which trail you take or which point you end up on, the scenery is pretty hard to beat. Since the midday sun in Mexico is blazing hot, after a few hours of exploration and ups and downs and incredible viewpoints, you'll be ready to cool off. But that blazing Mexican heat, it's nothing to worry about here. Because those calm and protected anchorages, they've got some calm and protected beaches that are perfect for some afternoon relaxation and a nice refreshing swim. If you've been watching these videos for a while now, you can probably tell we like to eat. To me, there's almost nothing better than being in an incredible spot and having some incredible food. And with Sebastian around, amazing meals come on a nightly basis. <laughs> we have Mediterranean fish pasta. No, but seriously. Good pasta coming up. Cooking with Sebastian. It's actually been said to be the best pasta, best seafood pasta ever by some folk that know their stuff. You want to open this window? Cooking with a view. We have onions and garlic and olive oil and we are going to put in some artichoke hearts. Put some artichoke hearts in there and then we're going to put sun-dried tomatoes. Does everybody love sun-dried tomatoes? Capers. Organic pink Himalayan. Nothing but the best in cooking with Sebastian. <laughs> on, on, on cooking with Sebastian. It smells like a pizza now. This would be good on a pizza. Yeah. Actually, with some Parmesan on the top. Mm -hmm. Non-traditional. And outside on the grill, out from the freezer came the last of our big fat fish. And after that big fat fish was grilled, onto the sauce it would go to simmer for a quick minute before being put on top 
of an amazing plate of pasta. There she is. Voila. Best seafood pasta on earth. Oh my god. Yep. An amazing meal in an amazing place with some pretty great friends. I really can't think of many things better. Best pasta in the world. After a couple of pretty fun days at Isla Danzante, the weather finally looked like it was starting to turn. So, in the morning, we were out of there. Oh, rojo, oh, rojo, adventure. Uh, we're winning. Enjoy it while you can. Yeah, a uh, race isn't much of a race if you guys can't get up before noon. Silence, radio silence. Radio yeah, silence. Maybe you're right. Well, we'll just see. Don't count your chickens. We didn't even bring any chickens. I love racing. I love racing, especially when those guys are still anchored. It's the only way we can really win. Both of those guys are faster in these kind of conditions. It's light or a heavy loaded down boat. Gotta do what you gotta do. And we're all about winning on this boat. There? Yep. It looks like a temple. A temple? Yeah, take a picture. Can you take a picture of that for Jen? Is it my turn to drive yet? <laughs> Is it my turn to drive? I no. like driving too. Those guys are nowhere to be seen. They're scared of being beat like beat by a girl. Got two bits of bad news. Two bits! Brenda won't let me drive and I'm, I like driving especially in a big race, and the race is on. Those guys finally left the anchorage. I'm getting a little nervous about it. With those guys finally leaving the anchorage, a building breeze, and Brenda smack dab in the middle of the groove. Today, it would go down in the logbook as a truly epic day of sailing. been a pretty good day of sailing, but sort of weird. We got all the way to Laredo, which is where we were shooting for originally, and then decided the sailing's pretty good. Let's go somewhere else. Then we got somewhere else, which is Puerto Balandra. It's about eight miles from Laredo. We've got about a mile from the anchorage there. So the sailing's pretty good. Let's go somewhere else. So then we went to Isla Coronados, or at least started going there. And then decided to go back to Laredo. So on the chart plotter, we've made almost a complete oval and covered about 20 miles of extra sailing today. Even with all those extra miles of pretty great sailing, we still made it to the anchorage in Laredo before Sebastian. Because it turns out, he covered even more miles than us.
right behind us is the town of Laredo. We made it and only covered about 20 extra miles to get here. But sometimes the call of fresh fruits and vegetables, they get you. So we're gonna go to shore, pick up some supplies. Cause we haven't really seen anything since we left La Paz, which was, I don't know, three weeks ago, something like that. So it'd be good to have some fresh stuff. Thanks to a long day of sailing that went down in the books as epic, the little town of Laredo would help us stock up our boat with fresh fruits and veggies and give us a nice calm night at anchor. But this place would only be a short overnight stop for us because the next morning we were headed farther north and had our sights set on a big old volcano. But that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.